in what has felt like an absolute eternity, it's the end of the international break and back to Premier League football. Thank God. Um, yeah, I don't know about you. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I, you know, I love watching England play at times, obviously in the big tournaments, but these international breaks I just find so dull. Uh, it just feels like it really drags. So yeah, um, we're back playing West Ham, thank God. And uh, this time we're away to Newcastle. It's a tough game, a really tough, tough fixture. Um, in the sort of middle of um, three tough games, you had Villa, got Newcastle, then Spurs, and these are kind of you feel a little bit sort of not season defining, but they're going to be they're going to play a significant role in terms of our um, ambitions to get European football next season. And of course, Newcastle themselves are looking for European football again. They've they've been in the Champions League this season, didn't go you know as, hope, as well as they had hoped, but they're going to want European football at the very well. Let's be honest, that's their bare minimum for that club now. So this is a big game for them as well. Um, and my word, though, it's a good time. I think it's a good time to play them uh, as a West Ham. I, I really do. I think we can go into this knowing that they have got some serious injuries, and we've got to take advantage of it. Um, but I still think it's going to be a, a very, very tough encounter uh, for West Ham. But um, look, we, we go into it with a pretty strong squad. We're going to come to us in a minute. But I want to talk about Newcastle first. Um, Tony Ali, I mean, they've, uh, do you know what? This betting allegation stuff from him, we, obviously he's, he's ha- currently serving a 10-month ban. And um, as I was doing this preview for this, I saw, I saw the news coming out that, that he'd um, been charged by the FA. And I didn't really read too much into it at the time, but um, I was doing my sort of preview and my notes before this. I wanted to look into what was going on. Um, so it appears that he's broken betting rules again. I mean, again, it's only allegations. We've got something going on ourselves with Lucas Paqueta. So it's not nothing. It's not been proven as such as yet. But the fact he's been found guilty in Italy doesn't look good for him. But he's been doing it while he's at Newcastle. And you just think, I dread to think that what well what that means for his Newcastle future and what he's doing to the club. I mean, I, I don't I, I don't know um, a Newcastle fans uh, too well. I've got a couple of people that, that I used to know um, know a bit, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm not that close to that football club. So I don't really know the fan feeling of, around the situation. But from the outside of looking in, especially at this stage and what's going on, I can't imagine they're going to be too pleased about this because, you know, you've, they've paid a lot of money for the player. It's a player that I really admire. Excellent, excellent player. Obviously, Italian national and a wonderful midfielder. And for him to have done that whilst he's serving a current ban is... Um, yeah, it's damaging, and I do wonder what it's going to do to the sort of Newcastle morale uh, amongst fans, the players, etc. It's, it's not good. It's not a good look at all, and not great timing for the club. Um, but uh, yeah, as I say, it's only allegations at the moment for him. But uh, yeah, not not great. Um, they're having a strange season, Newcastle. I think it's fair to say they've. This is my take on it, and I I will probably get it in the neck for some Newcastle fans. I, I don't know what it is, but sometimes I seem to offend <laughs> Newcastle fans, and I don't ever mean to. I'm just saying it purely as an outsider looking in, right? Um, I, I would say that I think they overachieved last season. I, I think that they weren't really expecting to be getting Champions League football this soon in this kind of new venture of theirs, wanting to sort of challenge the, the, for the top and, and try and break into that um, top six, et cetera, and, and challenge for titles. I, I don't think realistically that Champions League football was was on the agenda so early. Don't get me wrong, a wonderful achievement. Great they did it. Brilliant for Eddie Howe. He did, did a great job getting them there. But that being said, I think they struggled with it. I think that was obvious um, because with the fact they went out so uh, early in the competition. Um, I mean, they had a very tough group, so there was no shame in it whatsoever. But I think you could kind of sense the way that it was sort of having a little bit of an impact on their their Premier League uh, campaign as well. I, I, I just get the feeling that they probably would have been better served maybe just maybe getting the Europa, possibly. I mean, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but if they'd maybe done that, and in a tournament maybe they could have excelled a bit further in. I, I, I just get the feeling that that Champions League was maybe just a bit of a step too far too soon. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but the fact is now we're in a, the next season from that. Well, as I say, one last season for me, I thought they overachieved. You into this this season, it's the opposite. You look you look at uh, Newcastle now. I think mm, they're not hitting the heights that they would be expecting. Um, whether it be if you're a Newcastle fan, I'm guessing on the board, I think they're expecting a little bit more. Um, at, as I've said in, in the early in this video, the bare minimum for them is Europe. They, they, they've got to get European football. You cannot be spending 60, 70 million pounds on individual footballers and not be able to offer European football. It, it's just not good enough. So um, I think there's a bit of pressure on them. I, I, I do. And I think there's a bit of pressure on Eddie Howe. I think 
Um, he's had it a little bit anyway this season. There's been sort of murmurings, isn't there, that at times he was he going to go, etc. But he seems to be getting the back in, certainly from the fans. Um, but whether that's going to last for the long term, I, I'm not so convinced. I, I, I don't know. I think that he has to get at least, at the very bare, bare minimum, get the Conference League this season. And, and even that, I think that would be considered a bit of a disappointment. But as long as they've got some European football, I think that would, that would just about get him over the line. But yeah, is it? This is a big game for them, as it is for West Ham. Um, but I will say about Eddie Howe, um, I, I didn't expect him to do so well at Newcastle, I'll be honest. When he got the job, I wasn't convinced. I actually felt that he would, he was going to be sort of there for a, a very short period of time. I thought he would struggle with the pressures of that football club. I'm, I'm referring here to the new ownership. You know, they're coming with all this money and this kind of promise that they're going to invest in the team and, and, and build this football club into that's going to be able to compete with the likes of, sort of Manchester City, etc. Um, I, I didn't see Eddie Howe as that man. But I will say I, I've been really surprised of him and really impressed. He's, he's done remarkably well under that kind of pressure um, and handling those individuals. And I just think he is a really... Um, classy individual I think he handles the media really well I think he 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 clearly has a very good bond and a close-knit group you know with his players and I just it's a real likable feeling about Eddie Howe um but I will also say I don't see him as their long-term long long-term manager I think if they're going to be really realistically where they want to go I'm just not seeing him as that man. Um, but that is, I still think he's a great manager. And to be honest with you, if he um, was ever to be at West Ham, I certainly wouldn't be disappointed. But yeah, it's, um, that's just my gut feeling with it. But maybe I'm wrong. As I say, he's, he's kind of surprised me already. So maybe he will continue to do so. But I, I just think this season, if they are not to get European football, I, I just struggle to see him survive him. I, I, I don't think the club would be uh, wanting to keep him on if they were unable to get um, in that sort of top seven uh, bracket, top seven, top eight bracket this season. I think they're going to, that he would struggle to retain his job. But I, I do have uh, a lot of um, sympathy for him as well uh, and the club because of this injury situation. They have had injury problems all season. It really has been an absolute shocker. It kind of reminds me of that time we had at West Ham. I, we don't, we've, I mean, I'm probably cursing it all now, but I know we've not been so bad in recent seasons, but when we had that period where we always just seemed to continually have this bad, bad injury, bad injury, and we were all sort of saying, is it the ground? Are we, where are they training on it? We, I couldn't work out. It's almost like Newcastle going through that. I don't know what, I, I don't know enough. I haven't watched enough of Newcastle, I like every match this season to know about Eddie Howe's squad rotation. And maybe if that's playing a factor, maybe it's just burning them out. I don't know, but they just seem to have continual issues um, and it's just never ending. So, I mean, I looked at the, the list, as I say, doing my prep for this video. It's actually remarkable. I had to sort of double check it. I thought, am I actually reading this right? So they've got Callum Wilson's out. Thank Christ. Callum Wilson is out. So that's uh, at least a bit of good news for us. Um, Nick Pope, uh, Botman, of course, serious injury. Tonyali, Tonyali of course, is, is suspended and will, well, could be out for even more a longer time. He's out for the rest of the season. You've got Lewis Miley is out. Um, they've also got significant doubts. Joe Linton, Kieran Trippier, uh, Liverman, 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 Mento, Liverman, Mento. Liverman, Mento. I'm awful at saying his name. Um, it was a maybe, by the way. It's a 50 50. Um, I mean, it's a ridiculous injury list. But even that being said, with the, the, the quality they've got uh, within that squad, you know, they can still cause us a problem. Uh, and if anything, actually, it's a bit of a testament to how well Eddie Howe's done this season, considering all these injuries they've had, they're still fighting for European football. I think that's a, a lot to be said, actually, because they they haven't been able to spread, spread the money, have they? They've got these owners that are the richest in the, in the world of, of football owners. They can't really spend it because of this financial fair play. Um, it really does sort of suck out that ambition, doesn't it? Um, do you know what? It's actually got to that point now where we're West Ham fans. We've always gone, oh, I wonder if we get that owner, if that, 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 that someone comes in with all this money. You know what I mean? That, that could be the opportunity for us to go and challenge all that. It's actually no point in it now because you can't even spend it if you've got it. So, um, but that being said, they're, they're still in a good position as a football club. You know, a club that's been relegated, they're not a yo-yo club as such, but they've certainly had their struggles, haven't they, Newcastle, over the years. and obviously have been they've been in the championship and you have to say they've they've done really well they, they have done really well and uh, and and they are they are growing they are on the right stepping stones i said i just felt the last season was probably that step too far too soon if they've maybe just underachieved it got a little bit lesser so sorry not overachieved so much i think it might have served them in good stead actually 
Um, I still a lot. There's a lot to admire about them. Um, and before I go to West Ham, just a couple of players I do admire. Uh, Anthony Gordon. I, I've got to say another one. Like Eddie Howe, sort of surprised when he went there. I wasn't really that um, impressed with the move. I, I didn't see enough of him at Everton to make me suggest to suggest to me that he was going to do well at Newcastle. I didn't really understand the fee. I, I didn't quite get the excitement around him. Um, and when he started, he, he started badly, I thought, at Newcastle. He didn't look great. He, I remember he had a bit of a tantrum, didn't he? Getting subbed and sort of threw his shirt down or whatever he did. He weren't very happy with Eddie Howe. And I just sort of couldn't see it being uh, this long-term success for him at, at Newcastle. I couldn't see it coming. But um, no, he's really turned a corner. He's done really, really well. Um, and credit to him. And um, yeah, they, they've got some great players. Um, Isaac, of, of course, a, a wonderful player. And you've got Bruno in the midfield who just pulls the strings. And they, they, they have got some serious talent, even with all these injury concerns they've got. Um, you know, they, they've done... They've got a great squad and they're going to cause us no, uh, you know, problems. But uh, with this uh, situation they have got, it's a situation West Ham must be looking to take advantage of because this is a big game, um, despite our terrible record at Newcastle. Although, you know, in recent years, we've been not been so bad. So let's just hope we can uh, do something there. Let's go on to West Ham, though, now. Enough about Newcastle. Let's go on to us. So I think West Ham have turned a corner now. I do feel that we are in a much... Um, we look a bit more solid. We look a little bit more, a bit tougher to beat, uh, and, and look like we've got a bit of something about us. We've got players that are in good form. Um, There's just something about us at the moment that, that gives a little bit more of a belief that we could possibly get something over the line this season. I, I, whether we can win the Europa League, I'm, I'm not convinced on that. I think there's just two uh, good teams in it at the moment. I, I can't be confident enough for something like that. But I'll tell you what, getting a sort of top seven, top eight position isn't isn't out of the realms for us now. And you're starting to feel that if we can just get a couple of those games, like I, the Newcastle away, the Spurs at home, just get the three points that we need in those games, it could be enough. I have said before in a video, I think we need to get to 60 points. So pressure's on for us, actually, that we do spring up a surprise. And this one could be perfect for us. I, Newcastle, got the bad news of um, Tonyali, and they've then got on top of that, um, these injuries. You know, it's probably not a bad time to be playing them. Um, so it's hopefully we can go there in, de- in a decent nick, in decent form and um, get, and get something. But I do feel that we've um, we've turned a bit of a corner West Ham this season from that terrible start to the year. Well, when I say start, it was a couple of months, wasn't it? Shocking, um, really, really bad form when it was actually putting David Moyes on the brink uh, of losing his job. Um, but it does feel like we've, we've just started to come out away from that now. So uh, let's hope we can keep uh, building on that. This is ov- obviously, of course, the game ahead of Tottenham uh, next week on, a t- on Tuesday night. So it would also be really good, wouldn't it, to go into that game with a, a bit of a bounce, a bit of confidence uh, against a side that we, do, you know, we really want to we want to turn over, especially at our place on, on under the floodlights. Um, it would say, you know, I mean, what I'm saying is, if West Ham can get a decent result with Newcastle, then go and beat New- uh, Spurs at home, and all of a sudden you're looking at the final eight games of the season or seven games a season, you're thinking, you know what, we, we really could do this. Um, it's a big cut of games to West Ham. And, um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'll come into my prediction in a minute. I've I, I've got a fair, a little bit of confidence in this one, a little bit of confidence, just because of the situation at Newcastle. There's lots to play for. We're coming to the business end of the season uh, and it's time we get some those big results over the line. It's going to be tough though because Newcastle will be thinking very much the same. They'll know that we, we've got to beat West Ham if we want to continue our sort of hunt for European football. And as I've said, that is Eddie Howe. That's got to be he's a, a sort of literally, you can't get any le- less than that. Um, let's go on to West Ham though quickly on the team news before I go into the, the team what I want to see play and the prediction. Um Cornet, Max Cornet, talked about in the previous video. He sort of sent a bit of a warning shot to Moyes about he's been frustrated, he wants to do well. Um, he's sort of making it very clear he's available. He's made himself available for this game. Um, whether he's going to be um, featuring, I, I don't know at this stage, um, but he's made it very clear he's fit and he's ready. So let's wait and see. I, I, as I've said, he's not favoured by David Moyes. Let, let, let's be honest, he's not someone that I don't think the manager trusts. But, you know, he, it's, frust- it's frustrating, isn't it, with Corner? It really is. Uh, whether he's going to be available for selection is, is, is uh, anyone's guess at this stage. But because it is, it's a strange, he's a strange player with his injuries. He always seems to have an ongoing issue, doesn't he? Always having a niggle, always having a problem. Um, and we could do with him, though. We could do because we haven't got much depth in this squad. We've just got rid of two bloody wingers in the summer. Um, sorry, in January. Um, and he's really our only uh, viable sort of realistic left winger. I mean, obviously, we, we do play Paquetta out there. Um, at times we also chuck out Kudas, but it's nice to have another option uh, there in terms of someone that actually does should be playing in that position. Overall, our squad is in good health. 
it's not bad. Uh, Mohamed Kadus and Mikel Antonio both pulled away from international duty this week, but they are available as far as we understand it at this stage. So it's a pretty much full strength squad apart from Edson Alvarez. I mean, oh, that is the killer. That is the moment where I just feel like that's where the confidence level just starts to drop. He's such an important player for us. He, he really is that engine, that that player that that keeps it tight and and that I don't know. He's got that um, bit of steel about him. Do you know what I mean? Before the, in terms of our defence, and yeah, he's going to be a sore, um, sorely missed in that game. And I, I'm that, that's the part where my confidence starts to, to sort of dwindle a bit when I know he's not going to be playing because he has become such a vital player for West Ham. Look, let's go to my team. I really want to know your score uh, score predictions for this one. So get them in. If you if you get it right, you get into the draw and you can win something from our shop. We've already sent out some um, gifts from our shop for people who have done it. So it's free to do so. So why not? You need to be a subscriber as well. So click subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. Because uh, it's, it's about 50% of you watch this that aren't subscribers. So it's, it, why not? Just click it. It's all you have to do. And also you enter as well to win a free uh, West Ham top one. We basically give one away um, every month for the whole season. So do remember to do that. Right, this is my team. Ariola in goal. Um, he's been outstanding for us this season. Really has cemented himself as our number one goalkeeper. Um, so, yes, yeah, he's definitely um, going to be starting for me. My back four are going to be uh, Vladimir Soufal. I think he's been in great form for West Ham. He, oh, despite this news coming out that he's um, having some contract issues and not, 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 not agreed uh, an extension as yet. I think, it just sounds like there's a bit of negotiations going on to me. I don't, I don't think he's going to be leaving anytime soon personally at this stage, but let's wait and see. Um my back um yeah so my centre back pairing is going to be Mavra Panos and Kurt Zuma. I've actually been more impressed with Kurt Zuma of late. I actually think the last couple of games he's looked all right. Um maybe it, I just hope that this is now what we're going to see towards the end of the season because he was in horrid form and he did look very uncomfortable for large periods of games but he actually looks in, in better nick. I wouldn't say you know he doesn't look fit but he looks in slightly better nick. Uh, Emerson at left back, of course. Um, and this is my midfield, and this is where I start to get a bit anxious. But I basically I've gone for uh, Calvin Phillips stepping in for Edson Alvarez. I can't believe I'm saying that though, and I shouldn't be saying that about Calvin Phillips. Do you know what I mean? I shouldn't be saying that I'm worried about having someone like Calvin Phillips coming to step in. He's a bloody England midfielder, for God's sake. He was someone that was being compared to not long ago with Declan Rice. So this really needs to be he needs to have a game now where he comes in and, and does a job and we see the player that he was um at Leeds United i.e. why Manchester City signed him etc and who's been getting in the England squad we need to start seeing that player and we need him now because we're going to miss Alvarez um and we can't have a player like Phillips that's just looking so devoid of confidence and really struggling to even string a pass you know it's I, I just I just don't want to see it do you know what I mean? I really want to see now uh, him sort of start emerging and stepping up because that kind of like bedding in period for me is gone. Do you know what I mean? He joined in January. We're now sort of what the tail end of March. I want to start seeing some performances out of this player. Uh, and this is now where he's got to start stepping up. Um, and I bloody hope he does. Let's, let's really hope he does. Uh, Thomas Suchek alongside him. I think we're going to need, um, we're going to need him in there uh, in this game. Um, it's going to be tough. This, I think it's going to be a tough game for this midfield. Uh, Lucas Paqueta playing ahead. Um, behind the front three. And the front three I'm going for is uh, Jared Bone on the right, Mohamed Kud- Kudus on the left, and Mikel Antonio up front. Um, I'm not that confident. I'm, I, you can't be, can you? It's very difficult for West Ham right, to be really buzzing with confidence. It's so difficult to predict. But I still think we might get something there. So I've gone for a two-all draw. Um, I fancy Mohamed Kudus to score as well. And... He's hoping that Calvin Phillips puts in a bloody good game because I tell you what, if we need, we really do need this guy now to start stepping up because my word, this is a really, really big game. 